astronomy has one thing going for it, it's the power of the image. That iconic image that grabs you and enthralls you and makes you understand really how little at all we understand. Pictures like this from the Hubble Space Telescope have been the gateway for our understanding of the physics and chemistry of the cosmos. And that's true whether you're a professional astronomer like myself or whether you're just an interested member of the public. And these are so much a part of our society now that they've even filtered down into pop culture. But these images, as much as we've learned from them and as beautiful as they are, they're just static snapshots. And it's tempting to think of them as pictures we're taking of something that's just painted in a fixed way across the sky. Now, of course, we all know that the sky isn't fixed. Um, people have tried to show that through artwork in Starry Night. Maybe you've even seen it yourself if you're lucky enough to have seen the aurora. Or, you know, looking out in New York, you see a twinkling star. If the star turns, it lands at JFK. Moving on. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you that these experiences, even our best efforts to capture them, are equivalent to seeing a lion in the zoo versus having it chase you in the wild. Our universe is a dynamic and even a violent place. And you might think that you're just looking at the beautiful sky and the park, enjoying a sunny day, but I'm here to tell you that there are explosions in the sky above you all the time. Now, these might be from our own sun, which flares and sprinkles us with radiation, a star that sweeps too close to its black hole and is torn apart, its guts strewn across the universe for astronomers to see. And there are tons of examples like this. You can take, for example, that half of all stars are born like conjoined twins, where they're born together and bound by gravity. And if one dies first, it actually becomes something of a zombie that eats the outer layers of its former sibling. And so if any of this seems too abstract and too far away from home, you can take something that quite literally hits close to home, and that's asteroids and comets that are capable of giving us a black eye on par with the one that killed the dinosaurs. But how do we actually observe these things? How do we capture this mutable, dynamic universe? Well, a static snapshot tells you something, but it doesn't tell you everything. It doesn't tell you the before and the after, and it doesn't give you any context. I mean, is the cake on the floor because the bride got carried away at the dance party or because she ran away before the wedding actually happened? Much like photography was revolutionary in its time and it's still a really important part of how we engage with and record the world, motion pictures changed us for forever, really, because they allowed us to see not just a moment in time but an actual event. And astronomy is entering this movie moment, and this is the movie maker of the future. This is the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, it's LSST for short, and it's a future project. It's a telescope that will be down in 2018 down in Chile. And what it's going to do is observe the entire night sky every night, once a night, for 10 years. The result of this will be a gigantic cosmic movie. And we're going to be able to see everything in the sky that changes. So like any good movie, depending on your definition of good movie, there'll be lots of explosions, like the ones I showed you before. But instead of like a movie where one sees an entire event evolve in, in its whole, in whole timeline, we're going to be able to send out alerts that let you know when something is happening. So there's actually already an app for this. It's called Sky Alert. works with existing telescopes. And it'll send you an alert when something that happens that's interesting in the sky, whatever your definition of that might be, will let you know, and then you can go and observe it. Now, as you might imagine, once a night, every night, 10 years, the whole sky, this is a huge amount of data. But more important than the volume of data is that the data is going to be public right away. Now, this is really revolutionary because it means that whether you're a professional astronomer at a big name university, you have a lot of resources, or you're a high school student at a public school with very few resources, or you're just someone at home who's interested, you can access that data. And so essentially what we're doing is democratizing the sky. I mean, the sky is inherently democratic. Anyone can look up. It's accessible to anyone in principle. And so what we're doing is instead of just you being able to look up, you get to look up with the improved vision that LSST can give you. And so much like going to the movies and participating and seeing the unrolling of a story before us is really part of our social fabric and it's something that really bonds us together. It's my hope that in this new era that we're entering into, where we see astro astronomical events unfold on human timescales, that this will bond us together in an understanding of our own cosmos. So if you're interested, uh, you can check out lssst.org, or you can follow me on Twitter. And thank you. <laughs>